Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We've got a special guest here today with us. Say hey, Casper. Hi, I'm Casper. So um, he's our first guest on the Vocast. So we're going to be doing some, uh, we're going to be hammering a lot of questions at him. We're going to see uh, what all we can learn about him. So um, first off, I, I do want to start off with um, what is your first name? Because I'm actually not that sure myself. <laughs> So my first name is actually, believe it or not, it is Casper. Is it really? Uh, yeah, it's a very, very common name where I'm from. Uh, I'm from, I'm Danish from Denmark. So a lot of Caspers there. Denmark. Yeah. So where are you at currently? I, I live in the Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, in oh. Brno currently. Brno. That's cool, yeah. man. That's cool. Okay. So I've, uh, I must kick this off with a uh, first thing here. So mm -hmm. what is your, what is your preferred drink? My preferred drink, yes. uh, probably any energy drink I can get a hold on. <laughs> I like it. It's not, it's not good for me, but, but I like, like I'm still, I'm sitting, sipping a monster as we speak. It's, uh, I, I don't have a lot of, uh, hours. I don't have a lot of hours during the day. I so, uh, that. yeah, I, I, get I some caffeine. Struggle. Where, so my, I'm missing my button again. Sorry, guys. No worries. Uh, so I've got a I got a flurry of questions for you. Some of them are going to be um, community related questions. So we're going to start off here with um... okay. So what or who got you into music, and how did you find out? that you could sing or how did you find out you had talent when it came to singing <laughs> or in music? Well, um, actually, uh, music has not been a part of my life for very long. I was always playing the piano since I was a kid, uh, by ear, but I never sang before I turned 18. I'm 22 now. So four years ago I was in a high school choir class and I was like, you know, why not? And then I sang and found out I was a tenor and they needed those at the school. And then ever since I just, you know, started singing and stuff. And previously to that, like for the latest, like four years, three years, I was obsessed with like vocal range videos and acapella vocal range videos, basically. And there was a guy called Tommy P who was creating these. I was a really big fan of his. And then, you know, later on, like I, I became friends with him. And now, you know, I live in the same city. We hang out all the time. It's... So pretty swell. <laughs> Make sure to give my Tommy my regards later. I'm hoping yeah, to have him on sure. at some point. But uh, man, that's cool. So you really haven't been singing that long then? No, just around four years. Wow. And I mean, considering the amount of work that he puts out and the amount of good work he puts out, it's pretty baffling that he's this good over four years. So uh, I got another one for you. Oh, I think, no, I, I have been singing for four years. Tommy's been singing his entire life. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Is something else, man. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most influential figures, both in your life as well as your musical career? Oh, well, uh, working closely with the the bass gang, you you get to you know experience a thing or two. Uh, and when I'm kind of helping them, uh, like put up these, uh, arrangement latest, it was hide and seek by Lauren Paley. Uh, when we are brainstorming the ideas and when we're talking about them, you really get the, like the creativity influx from especially Marwan since that was his project this time around. Uh, and Marwan is such a talented and such a bright minded kid yeah. and is so greatly supported by each base gang member. And that's why they make such a good team. So when we're like, for example, for, for hide and seek. Uh, when the arrangement was done, he was he was talking about all these like all these bell tone techniques and how he changed from minor to major and all that stuff, uh, and that really has an effect on when I do my own music for my own channel. Uh, so probably the bass king is probably the biggest influence I have because I work so close with them. Uh, I talk to them every week, you know, get on get on the process. So yeah, probably. So tell me a little more about the um, about the. Uh the hide and seek piece there that the, the bass king did. 
Yeah, sure. Well, uh, we have been planning hide and seek for like a year almost. Marwan, when he released uh, Emperor's New Clothes, he was like, I want to do a song with Lauren Paley, and it has to be hide and seek. And if she says no, we're not doing hide and seek. <laughs> and we were we were planning this thing. We were budgeting it like we wanted. We brought we 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 brought in uh, Ed Boyer, uh, Pentatonix's uh, you know mastermind. He is and we, crazy. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and we brought in uh, uh, Dylan Locke, who is a very, very talented video editor who had ended up doing the video. So we actually just went all out with the budgeting and everything. And then just when the video was like, you know, it was finished and we were ready to release it like the following week, Voice Play releases their own version of Hide and Seek with Lauren Paley. That was the coolest timing. <laughs> yeah, we we were we were worried because uh, we've been working on this. Well, mostly Marwan, but I say we. Yes, the base gang has been working on it for like uh, a, a full year. Everything from uh, like the marionette costume designs and you know storyboarding and everything. And since uh, none of us do this full time, we are either students or you know work a part time job or full time job yeah. uh, on the side. So so it takes a little while longer for us. Uh, but when we were finally done and we were super pleased with the result, Marwan, the genius as he is, was so proud of the project. And then we we saw uh, 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 Marwan like was in a Discord call with me and Tommy in our private server where we were playing, and he would just hear all of a sudden he just goes what the hell and then <laughs> like repeats it all the time because he just got the notification about hide and seek free lauren paley and then we were talking about it and how to like like how to adjust to probably a lot of fans are going to be like you copied voice play and uh why did you that, that, that and stuff like that but i think we we've handled the situation very well uh there are community like the base game community is really good at deflecting them and saying well there can be two versions and oh but the boys have planned it for a year but you know who cares they're both so different you know stuff like that which I is i do think great. That it was really cool too is that y'all had a lot of like similarities as far as the arrangements go but they but yet you had it's it was a very different touch that you guys had mm -hmm. and it was speaking of which guys i just did a uh i did a reaction and analysis of that and it is going to be going up either tonight or tomorrow hopefully so stay on the lookout for that being um, friday the 2nd of december correct yes yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was but it was really cool because the timing of this is that people think that they copied them where it being only like a week or two apart from releasing but mm. it was it was really cool because you said you were playing it for how long again like around a year yeah like, like full on yeah just like a year i don't know how long mm. we play had been doing theirs but i mean that was really like cool yeah, we're not, and of course we're not like we're not like angry at voice play or anything. We were just like it, it's a funny coincidence because Lauren didn't tell us about it, uh, which is probably you know to that's totally fine. She probably can't tell anyone. Right. Uh, but um, but like you know, it's just it's coincidental, and and we we've actually been in contact with with voice play about it uh, following the releases, and we were like, your video is great, your arrangement is great. And they were like, oh guys, you're you, like they commented on the video as well, like oh this is awesome, guys, phenomenal video, you know. So there's no there's no bad blood between the bass king and and voice play. No, but, but the, yeah, it's. I thought that was pretty cool too that they gave you guys a uh, gave you guys a bit of a shout out in that comment. Mm -hmm. I went and I read that. That was really. That was really decent of them for sure. So, um, I got another one for you. Well, I've got a lot yeah. for you, but um, what is something that one of these influential figures has said to you that has stuck with you your entire music journey? So you mentioned the bass gang. So what would be something mm. that they might have said to you that stuck with you so far? Like I have uh, like um People I like I'm I'm mostly involved with with Tom and Marwan uh, because those are the ones that like we we sit in the Discord every day and we talk and we play and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that with uh, Peter and Bar Peter and Barbara Peter and Bobby <laughs> who are who are Americans, you know. Yeah. Uh, I I do talk to Peter every here and then because uh, I help him out a bit with his uh, social media and YouTube uploads as well. But um, Marwan uh, said at some point uh, that my voice was incredible when we did the moment of silence he told me that my voice was incredible and he couldn't have found a better collaborator than me on the song which i you know really took to heart and told me told me that i was the best singer he knows which i like wow find really i, I was like really really like 
really starstruck by that. That's a heck of a compliment um, there. Yeah, and I also told I when when I then told him like like better than Peter Barber, and he was like, oh, okay, maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I'll, I'll definitely. It was it was when we were recording "Wake Me Up" for his album that he told me it was really yeah. really dope. Yeah, for sure. It's awesome, man. I mean, that's that's a heck of a compliment in the music industry. For those mm-hmm. of you that aren't too familiar with the music industry, if you get told that you are the best singer somebody has ever heard, that's just I, I would say heartwarming is the is is putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah, understatement of the year, big yeah. time. So um, this, I kind of have the answer already to this one, but um, mm-hmm. do you play any instruments? So you've obviously <laughs> got a piano sitting right there beside you. Yeah. Um, if do you play any other instruments, and what are they? And- yeah, I uh, I play piano, guitar, bass, and drums. Uh, and then I sing, of course, and I do vocal percussion. And then I used to play an uh, an Asian instrument called the erhu. Probably not as good anymore because I've been I've been touching that thing for like maybe five years. I don't want I to had, interrupt uh, you, but what is yeah, an erhu? An erhu is a. Um, have you have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Yes. So when Ukwe is sent, the kind of like high pitched cello that plays. Uh, that's an erhu. Uh, you probably heard it in, in well, yeah. It's a, it's like when mo- most people ask me the same thing, like, well, what is that? And then as soon as I show them, like, like what it sounds like, they inc- instantly recognize the instrument. I need to get like, I don't have an erhu with me here in the Czech Republic, sadly, but I hope that at some point I'm going to be able to afford a new one and then you know start again, get back to groove. Because you know when I was playing it, I was playing it mostly like for fun to enjoy myself. But now I can maybe use it in a like you know in an arrangement if I ever get my hands on one again <laughs> that's really cool so how long have you been playing each of these instruments well piano i've been playing my entire life uh and then pretty much everything else i picked up in high school uh i took the erhu uh like the year before high school just you know for fun but everything else was uh i originally got accepted into this danish high school where uh as a music student uh but mostly in the you know like uh practical instruments like practical music so we would like you know study like performing and yeah. like uh like live live shows and you know stage presence and stuff like that yeah. and i quickly picked up because the like for me a piano like a guitar is just a piano laying down so picked it up pretty quickly and a bass is even you know simpler it's just a piano but only bass notes laying down right. yeah <laughs> and then a uh, drums is just the percussion tab on the piano so also just learn pick that up pretty quickly so i mean picking up picking stuff up on your own too guys it's i mean sometimes it the coolest thing about learning something on your own is just the fact that you learned it on your own or you learned Mm -hmm. it by ear or you just learned it by watching it's just so it's such a cool little effect whenever you get to do that so not only like can you say that you know how to play an instrument really well you can also say that you you learned on your own without watching anyone else per se or learning from anyone else you just kind of there you go. Mm-hmm. So I do, I, I mean, I pick around on instruments just a little bit, but I really, I'm far for being able to play for anybody yet. Mm. I, I touch on the piano. I mm-hmm. have, I have an electric and acoustic guitar and I do pick around on those occasionally. The only other instrument I really know how to play fairly well. <laughs> this one's going to come off, off the wall a little bit, but I actually still have my trombone from high school. Oh shit! All right, dude, those <laughs> things are crazy cool. Those it's things are crazy cool. The best cool. instrument in the band, for sure. Yeah, I, the sound of trombone cannot be matched. Oh no, it can't. And uh, for anyone that wants to know, um, if there's enough people that ask for it, I may play it for y'all at some point. But we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> see where the where the uh, desire lies. So. Uh, Next question for you, Casp. Um, yeah. What are some things that people may not know about you? If there's any that immediately come to yeah. <laughs> So um, I, I guess that I don't show it in my online presence a lot, but I am obsessed with Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> big time. I, just, I noticed with the, um, the, the Gengar necklace there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually have a Pokeball tattoo on my arm as well. Oh! Uh, yeah, I have uh, my Nintendo Switch set up. You can see I have my old Nintendo Switch set up here. Oh, wow. And I have figurines everywhere. I also have, actually, we do this. 
you can take a look at the top. Oh, that's cool. You got one of those As, recent deaths. Yeah, I got to send. You can see that I have like figurines and stuff on top of my closet up there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. That yeah, I have these like the standing desk. It's pretty neat. So yeah, I, I am completely and utterly obsessed with Pokemon. I was uh, one of the new games came out last like around a week ago, uh, and from like the Friday it came out to the next Friday, 168 hours between that Friday and Friday, 116 of them I was playing Pokemon. <laughs> so <laughs> oh I was uh, very, 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 very upset. Well, I, I still am. You know, <laughs> been doing that my entire life. So yeah, that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> I I used I remember I used to play it back when I was like a kid and like my or like my preteens, but I didn't really ever I didn't really ever play it that much. Otherwise, I do you remember the Pokemon game for the Wii? I'm trying for the to the Wii like Coliseum. Yeah, it's, it's, it had like all the cool Coliseums in it. I'm trying to find the name. Hmm. Of it. It's um. There was Pokemon Battle Revolution, yeah, I think, it. for the Wii. Yeah. That's what. It, uh, that had crazy good. Yeah, you could connect your your platinum and your diamond and pearl games. Get the ones in there for that, battles. That was pretty sure, Yeah. That was a cool little touch back to mm -hmm. back when I still played video games. It was it was so much fun. Oh, that's that's bringing back some childhood memories now, man. I'm <laughs> oh man, okay um let's see what is what are some things that you do in your off time when you're not making music singing or performing etc well um i well i have a girlfriend that i live with i spend some time with her uh she she she's called vanessa she's from the czech republic met her here actually which is you know kind of funny yeah oh, uh, and then uh tommy and i actually go to this uh karaoke bar but that i guess that is like you know singing but we we usually go to to the karaoke bar together and then we you know we sing a little bit uh we sing mostly like uh no time to die inspired by his original cover and the remix i eventually did in 2020 right and stuff like that yeah so we and we have a we have a good time we've met a lot of uh friends uh, international and Czech in, in the bar. But that's mostly. I, I have. I'm also a student. I'm a marketing student. Uh, study online in a, at a university in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what I do. And then of course I uh, have my work, which is do some freelance marketing, freelance social media management, and then I'm kind of the manager, creative director for the base gang. But I don't call myself that because I'm mostly just like I'm organizing the meetings. I'm taking care of all their social media. Like yeah. if there's a video what they that they commented on or something like that or something they share, it's me doing it. Yeah. Uh, and then I help the boys like uh, you know like if they get any branding deals, I advise for them, or if uh, they get a DM with like you know some partnering opportunity or stuff like that i'm also the one responsible for taking care of that and then i have these this uh these cr uh, creative decision i guess for example the marionette theme for hide and seek was actually uh, my idea to, was, to come up that with that was really cool by the way i do i doted on that in my reaction that's going to be up, coming up soon but that oh, was really cool. well there you go yeah so st stuff like that is 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 kind of what i you know i i have with also uh marwan's recent uh uh spooky scary skeletons uh, was also uh, like I, I'm like I'm not like taking credit for the entire thing like like not at all I'm just right. like I I I I I, t I had I had a little influence saying that he was burned out with the with the song he's originally going to do for Halloween and then I was like you have your spooky scary skeleton shorts from last year take it and evolve on it and he was like Pew! and then he just created a masterpiece from that yeah I have, have you had to hear this. Oh, you need to check that out. It is oh, crazy good. Yeah, highly oh, recommend I sense that another reaction coming. Marwan's That's... stuff is so good. I need to hear more of Marwan's stuff. I haven't listened to him that much, and I oh. feel I feel uneducated now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you're interested, Marwan and I have a song together on his channel. If you haven't checked that out, we have a, a song called "Moment of Silence," which is uh, you know a banger. I'd say if you. I Do you want to check him off? I haven't heard that one yet. I have gone through and listened to some of your music, and it, this guy is insanely talented, by the way. <laughs> um, but he's got he's got some really good music out there. You need to check it out. I'll I'll put some more links in the description here shortly after we get done with this uh, this podcast. But um, moving along, um, how often do you practice singing throughout the week, and how long do you typically practice for? Well, I don't. 
want to say that I practice as much as I just like I've, I've never ever like practiced anything like in regards to singing uh it's like i'm naturally a tenor like naturally like a, a rock tenor counter tenor kind of stuff yeah. so i can go you know kind of high and then with uh i was for example i was instructed by tommy on how to do subharmonics and he just showed me like that little uh, that little sweet spot here and then i literally was just like every single day when i was in class or anything i was sitting like under my breath like just going <laughs> you know like just some, yeah, 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 yeah. you know and, and then that like then evolved 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 ending in, in that i can now actually use it as a usable range but but i wouldn't say that i've ever like practiced and i still don't i just you know if i'm like chilling in a discord call with my friends or something i could like randomly randomly drop like a low note in subs or <laughs> something you know and then that would be like the practice you know Sorry. it's the it's best kind of practice Side question right. here: What's the lowest? Uh, what's the lowest sub you can achieve right now? Oh damn! Right now, probably not very high, very low because I've been singing tenor all day. So my <laughs> my uh, my 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 sub disappear when I sing tenor. But we can try. I'm I'm usually better at like high subs are my specialty for some reason. Like we. <laughs> you see that there? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> so that for those that don't know yeah. that was a um that was a g sharp a flat one so something like that yeah but again not not very stable when i'm when i'm like because i've been singing uh i've been i had a christmas concert yesterday uh and i am still like you know practicing because one of my, my patrons asked me like well the high note in mary did you know with tommy p can you still hit that and then i you know i hit that and then when i'm getting up there in the high chest in the fifth octave i just like my subs just completely disappear it, it, it really kind <laughs> of wear in your voice when you're singing that high in your chest <clears throat> yeah Time, I, I found that out for sure, especially in my higher range when I've been singing. Um, what does your warm up routine like? Well, you kind of told me that you don't really practice much. Do you have mm. a warm up routine? And if you do, what does that look like on any given day? If I like, if I know that I'm going to record something, like if I if I'm doing a project and I'm going to record something, I usually find uh, there's this this dude on YouTube that has a great like I, I warm up in the alto range because the tenor one doesn't go high enough for me. Hmm. So I, I go on the alter range and then I just like, it's like very simple, like, um, like a pecchio movements throughout the piano. So it will be like, like, uh, you know, like that. And then the and then you know up and down the scale and yeah. kind of and when i'm when i'm feeling that i'm like warm and i can support properly then i start recording i got gotcha. you so you kind of sort of already answered this question but it was kind of a two-part mm -hmm. thing so what was like mm -hmm. your so that was was that like your go-to warm-up exercise i think my my, my go-to warm exercise is literally just singing singing very comfortable songs so i will maybe like if i know that okay i'm going to record in the afternoon i wake up in the morning and i'm like okay i don't have anything else to do other than recording so i would wake up at 10 a.m recording at 3 p.m and i would be like the, those five hours i would just sing like you know like berry tenory songs you know it doesn't like nothing above like you know like a4 so it's like easier to hit uh because when i when i get above a4 that's when i have to start supporting properly Right. but when it just gets like like a4 g2 a4 something like that you can just like sing it and then the voice you know warms itself up right. and then at by the afternoon i can usually you know sing my full range that's, that's some good stuff man i mean sometimes at the end of the day you don't have to have a super complicated warm-up routine to have no a, not at all have a good voice i have a good recording um what are your record high notes and your record low notes if you know what they are well um I have uh, like I, I'm I'm not a fan. I say I'm not a fan of these like record highs and record lows because like I could go like and then like okay, well that's my record low note, but I can't use that for anything. You know, it has to be in, like in a musical context. I hit a G sharp zero in like third sub something like that at some point, and it was like the country road, and then just you know G sharp zero instead. Yeah. Yes. And then that one yeah and then uh we had uh i have a unreleased song with monev 
where uh, Manu Sharma, he's the guy I worked with uh, on About Damn Time. And uh, he, he and him and I are doing a song where I have a D6 in a musical context, Ooh. but I'm pretty sure that I can just go, you know, and just, <laughs> and then again, again, record note, holy shit, but who cares, dude? Like, if it doesn't sound good, then, you know, yeah, I, I guess. There's no point, right? No, like I, I, as I, I always say that, like, I usually want to stay between G2 and like around E5. I can go higher. I can go lower if needed, but I prefer to stay there because that's like my, you know, full on, uh, like my Pasakio is there and it's like, that's where I can sound great. And then when it gets to these high tenor, like very high, like, like G sharp five, B, B flat five, stuff like that. Yeah. Then like, I have to start using my mix voice and stuff like that, which is, you know, totally fine. But I, I prefer to sing in chest. So, so what is your, or with that said, I'm going I'm gonna elaborate a little bit on this question that I've just asked him. So <laughs> what is, what is the top of your range and the bottom of your chest range? I should say, what does that look like as far as range wise? What's well, uh, like I always, uh, like as a tenor, my high notes are pretty consistent. So I think like if I'm like, you know, on a day and I'm warm, E5 is usually where I peak on, on chest voice. Uh, and then I, but, but then that like my lower range then disappears completely. But like, for example, if I wake up in the morning, I can easily have a C2, B1 in chest. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have had you, you have, you haven't seen, you haven't seen, uh, how, how I, I think because I have a bunch of videos on my channel, uh, highlighting my morning voice. Uh, have you seen my fix you cover? I have not yet. Okay. That's, uh, because that, that's an example of when I wake up and then I feel like, okay, right now I'm feeling like bassy. So I have like a lights will guide on the B flat one there yeah. in chest as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually when I wake up, but then it's like, you know, it's morning voice. So, you know, uh, after a full day, I can't like go that low. That's why I prefer to stay on G2. But if I, if I get like, uh, like if I get a chance, like, okay, I need you to sing like a D2, C sharp two, something like that. I'll record in the morning and then do the rest in the evening. So if we're count counting morning voice, then around, you know, the bottom second octave, but I would rather say like G2, E5, like, you know, cause that's when like. I'm fully capable of singing everything because when I'm singing the the C2 B1 then I will not be able to chest like anything I think C5 would be the peak there but yeah. <laughs> but you know you need to stick to your your vocal range or your your vocal type and I am a tenor so E5 G2 I'd say it's my final one that's that's pretty wide range folks for a for a reliable tenor range that's it's pretty wide and in E and E5 that's for those that don't know that note is uh uh this I think that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> moving. You want me to demonstrate? If you've got it in you. <clears throat> it was E there, right? Yeah. Whoa, folks. Yeah. Wow. That's that's pretty crazy. I, I cannot get that. I, wish. <laughs> I, I have to dip way into head voice for that. Well, there's nothing. If it sounds good, then who cares? Like, who cares? If it sounds good, if it's e, your E5 head voice is good, then that's totally like valid, man. Yeah, like, true. I, did, I mean, a lot of people like. I'll, I'm. A, I'm not gonna go too far into a tangent here, but I feel like a lot of people try to avoid using head voice and they worry more about chest range and like, mm. like yeah, chest range is important. But if you've got a good sounding head voice and your high range, it sounds almost exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really useful, especially for those of us that have voices that sit naturally lower, but mm. still at the end of the day, they're not like in the depths like some of the bass singers out there where you can still use that that head voice. You can go into the six octaves. I think one time I might have gotten to a B7. I really am 100 percent sure, but it was <laughs> that one was hard. <laughs> but that aside, I can imagine. Yeah. Um. What are some of your personal favorite artists that you've collabor collaborated with and who would you like to collaborate with in the future? Oh, damn. Uh, well, I, 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 I've never collaborated with a person that I didn't like thoroughly enjoy collaborating, like collaborating, collabing with. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think, um, some of the people I enjoy most are, are people like, of course, Tommy and Marwan. 
uh, especially because their arrangement processing is the arrangement process is just incredible, and they have these very creative way of like you know using not just my voice but also their own voice in the arrangement, so it just fits you know really great. Uh, but I also enjoy going like, like what do you say, like to to the to the lower side of YouTube, like to the people that are not as popular, like um, Journey Day, uh, for example. I'm I'm really 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 uh, grateful to have worked with him because he's a very very talented person, and he's also like the only other like tenor I know. Like it's it's me, Journey Day, and then uh, Julius Martinez Benz, if you know him, JMB. He's crazy with inhale. Oh man, that's my favorite extended technique. It, they, and these these three tenors are all like journey day is probably the best singer like on youtube that i know like like vocally him and peter barber are very closely tied on like the best singers i know wow, but that's awesome yeah big time and and then jmb with this inhale range so, so yeah i, I think like i want to say everyone because like you know monev and davide are also freaking amazing to work with adam b is phenomenal to work with i work with fernie from the from the bass singing nation and he is also just phenomenal like every, everyone is so talented, you know. I, I don't think I can pick one, but I think probably either Mar wanna tell me just because of the the quality we can put into it with their with their backing, you know. Yeah, yeah. They are they are all they are all within their own. I mean, they're some of them just don't flat out get any or get enough um get enough limelight recognition. Yeah, recognition. Yeah, yeah. Mm. for sure. Send me the link to um Journeyman or. Send me the link for Journey afterwards, and I'll have to check in. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, let's see. Who would you like to collaborate with in the future? If you, that you I, I I need to collect the Bass Gang Infinity Stones, dude. I'm missing the two others. Uh, I know for a fact that I am collaborating with one of them in 2023. Uh, and then just need to get the last one. I don't want to say who it is. But uh, hopefully, uh, I'll get both Bobby and Peter in 2023. So those two, I, I've, I'm looking forward to collabing with. Yeah, stay tuned for that. If you don't know, or I mean, if you don't know what's going on, you're intrigued. Stay tuned to his channel. He's got some cool stuff coming <laughs> up. But um, next one I got for you. Do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings, wants to sing, or is trying to make a career out of singing? Uh, probably change careers <laughs> because like the music industry is so hard to get into so so always have a backup plan like like for example don't drop out of your education studies whatever to pursue a career in music just if you do that be sure you have a plan because 99% of the time you are not going to make it in the music industry and that is also why i am i am like doing music on the side and i'm i'm primarily like a marketing specialist and a creative director yeah uh, so always have a backup plan uh, if you do want to pursue something get a niche in music don't just post like uh, normal covers or normal like normal you know like don't cover the top 100 songs in like a karaoke style do something unique find a group of people like for example the acapella community are really really great at supporting acapella uh related artists or reactors uh so sure get a niche and then work your way up build a fan base start a patreon but always have a backup plan that's probably the best advice i can give always have a backup plan because if you don't have a plan b and plan a doesn't work out you're stuck you you're know? screwed yeah you're crap mm -hmm. out of luck <sighs> okay so that brings us to the end of the traditional questions for the podcast. So this point, I'm going to give, we're going to have a little bit of a break and I'm going to give you as much time as you want or need to share whatever you would like to share with us regarding your, your music career, any advertising, you can plug your merch. I'll give you the next few minutes. You have the floor. So let me know what you got going on. All right. Well, um, uh... Like I don't know, I don't have the biggest thing going. I have a Christmas EP coming out uh, within the next couple of weeks, uh, recorded live in my Patreon live stream. I hope you guys will check that out. Uh, and uh, I have a very very interesting collab that I'm not going to be credited on, but I am going to be part of a song in December that I hope you guys will check out as well. I cannot disclose what it is, but 
Uh, I hope you guys will enjoy it. It is base gang related, but we will see. It's going to be awesome, hopefully. Uh, I don't have any merch, but uh, I hope that you guys will check out my YouTube channel. Uh, you can yell at me if you think I'm faking my range. <laughs> Something like that. This man's not fake, guys. It's not fake. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I, that's I think that's that's pretty much. Uh, oh yeah, uh, support the base gang, support Tommy P, support Marwan, Amen, and hello Monev. That's pretty much it. I want to say <laughs> so they are all in, super talented. They are all they are all musical geniuses, and you guys need to check them out. You need to give some more love to the base gang because, I mean, if voice play is saying that they're that they make good arrangements, you guys need to check them out. Really. So um, this also this section following your um, little advertisement section is a chance for you to ask me any questions. Should you have any for me? So you also have the floor for that. Yeah. Well. Uh, so why why um, why reactions instead of like your own music? Ooh, starting off with a good one. Yeah. Um, so I've never fully had the for lack of better terms, the self-confidence to really push out my, my music or mm. any music of my own. Plus it's kind of, it kind of goes back to what you said earlier with the music industry being very hard to get into. If you, especially if you don't have like an, like an already like a base to start with, mm. you, then it's very, it's very difficult. And that in tandem with the, with the self-confidence issues I've, I have had for over several years but I mean, I'm getting to where I'm a lot better with it now, especially now creating this YouTube channel, doing all these podcasts and such. But I know that that's something that I've always struggled with. And I know at the end of the day, I listen to a recording myself and I'm just like, ugh. but like the fact that someone would actually want to listen to music of mine would potentially make me want to try it. But that would be, have to be something that, I would have to get a lot of support for because at the end of the day, I still have that, that one little bit of self-confidence issue with my music as far as my, like my tone and my voice and such. But as far as reactions, I started doing those simply because I thought it was a better way for me to interact with people and to share my love for music with people by showing them what was so amazing about music and sometimes most of I, as you guys have noticed, I've done a lot of acapella um, in particular as react in my reactions, but I have a particular, I do play a bit of favoritism with acapella, but I true, I truly think that acapella is some of the most impressive music that you'll ever find because at the end of the day, you've got, you've got music that's being made with a human voice and there's no other actual instruments in it. And that's my favorite thing about acapella is that, You've got just human voices creating so many different sounds and so much, there's so much in these voice arrangements or in these acapella arrangements now, it's, it's really, it's really, it's really baffling to me. And I really like sharing the, the intricacies of music with people and showing them not just, I like being able to look at someone and say, you love your music, but do you know why you love it? And then they say, not necessarily, I just love it. And I was like, well, let's listen to this music and let's find out what makes it so amazing. Do you hear that little, do you hear that little drum pad? Do you hear that tambourine? Did you hear that little, um, that little sound effect? Holy cow, that's a nice low note. This is insanely high, you know, I mean, and explaining the keys the stuff is in, you know, just getting into the nitty gritty of the arrangements and the performances is really, I have a, I have the knowledge there, at least I feel like I do, and I, I like channeling that and pushing it through to people. So that way, although I may not have the self-confidence necessarily to do my own music, I like to at least share my knowledge and help people understand why music is amazing. That was a really long tangent, but that's a beautiful answer, man. I get, I get you, I get you. Like, but the word, word, like, 
highly recommend that just like if there's a project that you generally feel like it's like it's somewhat okay put it out there and then if it really scares you don't read the comments just like but at least like it feels good that you like at least could put some out because uh, i can hear on on your voice that you probably have uh, like a pretty good voice and and your your kind of like southern accent that that i'm hearing like with yeah. the you know <laughs> is 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 some like one well, like one of the like things that i adore in singing is like these like particular accents in uh, in singing especially like when you have this kind of like country vibe in your accent like you have you know yeah it's i think it's it's great so that i think you definitely like i know it's very easy for me to say that just put stuff out there but but i believe in you man i, yeah. I believe in you i'd love to hear some stuff from you oh my gosh guys so he's good he's putting a little bit of pressure on me i might actually have to consider <laughs> this <laughs> do you have any 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 other ones for me um, no i think i think that pretty much answered cool all right, cool. so we're going to migrate over to this uh, next section. So this is actually going to be a list of community-related questions gathered from several different discords and a few different ones from my uh, YouTube post. So mm -hmm. if you guys see him like get minimized in the screen here, that's just me sorting through my questions. So just bear with me as I look at these. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay. So first community related question was, um, what is one thing that has surprised you most in your uh, singing and content creation journey? What is any one thing that that could have surprised you the most? Like what has or what could surprise me? What has? What has surprised me? I guess the incredible amount of support I've been getting on my stuff. I, I would have, as you said, like having having someone actually listen to your stuff, like they they want to listen to what you put out. I find that incredible, uh, and I've never like I've I've never stopped getting support ever since I started, which I find completely baffling. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still very, very grateful to be able to, to put something out there and then get like, you know, nice comments. And, you know, I, I also like, like just the support from not just, you know, as a musician, but also people to like DM me saying, Hey, uh, like we all know that you're like doing great, great things for the bass gang and that you're keeping the boys up and healthy and stuff like that. And they would like, we, we appreciate you guys. That's just so, you know, so heartwarming is it, to, to hear that you're appreciated. Is it not like one of the coolest feelings ever? It is awesome. <laughs> it's, it's great. I can relate in my YouTube journey so far because I have had. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go too far into it, but mm. I have. I have been doing these videos for less than two weeks, and mm. we're, oh, we went from 20 subscribers that were previously subscribed to another channel for different content. We went from a, or 20 to 206, I believe, in a week yeah. and a half. And the very first video has 2,100 views on it so far. That's crazy. It's pretty baffling. Damn. And, and some of the comments that I read in these in these two is just, it's 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 so satisfying. There's no other way to say it, man. It's just it's so amazing to have people support you and what you do. So, uh, moving on to the next one we've got for you. So, mm -hmm. what was running through your head? when you were performing on All Together Now and oh. X Factor, and if it did, how much did it shape you as a singer and performer? Oh, God. Well, uh, yeah. So um, in like 2019, a year after I started singing, I was feeling invincible. It's like, hell yeah, I can do anything. So I was like, oh, there's like a talent show. Fuck <laughs> it, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, I, I actually made it all the way to the quarterfinal somehow on, on All Together Now and where I ended up singing You're Welcome from Moana. And it was the producers that thought it would be f like fun because I was a bit of a showman when it came to live performing. And I was like bouncing around and, you know, dancing and stuff like that. But my song, like I might say personally was terrible. <laughs> so I was, I was anxious of course about like singing live, but I was also just as soon as like the, the, the track started, I was just having, I was just having so much fun. So it was, uh, it was it was nice. I I, I felt that. And then on X Factor later, I went with my ex girlfriend. Uh, we made it all the way to the boot camp, which is the round before the 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 live shows begin actually. And we knew that my girlfriend at the time uh, was the strongest singer out of the two of us. So I kind of arranged all of our songs 
to fit like her lead more than my lead so we would sing stuff like shallow for example we got pretty popular in denmark for Ooh. uh and because she has the like the, the the heavy female lead there yeah uh and i was again anxious but as soon as i started playing uh the piano the guitar and singing it was totally fine and it helped shape me in the way that when i'm anxious about something music related or if i'm like for example if i'm at the karaoke bar and i i don't want to i'm like I'm, I'm about to sing you know in front of like a million drunk people <laughs> uh and then I, you know like like just and then you know just have fun with it so it's definitely given me an aspect of live performing that i didn't have before so it's been a great great deal of learning from those i also learned that x factor is the most rigged talent show in the world <laughs> Uh, we were we were literally told that um, like we could win the program had we been a little more entertaining with our backstory. So we got cut because there were a bunch of boys that were like uh, very attractive. They couldn't really sing, but they were very attractive. That's not true. They they could sing and they ended up being amazing because they got the right coaching. But at the time, we were definitely better than them. Uh, but we were told by the producers that that like sorry guys you were just not interesting enough and then we got cut before the live show playing favorites it sounds like yeah but you know like it's it just shows like it's just because you've seen so many warnings about like don't go to britain's got talent or x factor because it's rigged if you are like if your parents weren't mauled by a bear as a kid and you sing in their honor then no one gives a <laughs> shit you know oh my god so, yeah. is, is it really that bad well i let's as far as my personal experience and what I've like read online, and yes, sadly, it is it is that bad. The only thing that's like somewhat genuine is the voice. I've heard that's like that's genuinely like if you want to test out your singing skills, then the voice is the way to go. You heard that, guys. If you if you sing, the voice <laughs> is the way to go. All right, let's see. Next community question: What was the most surreal moment for you within the music industry? <laughs> um probably i think it was when in denmark when i started getting recognized on the street from x factor uh like me and my ex-girlfriend because we we ended up like we ended up going around denmark all kinds of places performing we had a had a good year in uh, 2020 2021 around covid was like slowing down mm -hmm. so we were out we were playing venues weddings stuff like that some concerts uh and then we were supposed to open for uh the biggest queen cover band in the world when they came to denmark they personally asked for us which i which is probably like i thought holy shit that's cool. uh but i i ended up i ended up uh, moving to the czech republic instead so we didn't go uh, and then eventually I, we, we broke up as well because we wanted different things in life, you know? Yeah. But, but yeah, that's probably like getting asked to warm to, to open for such a big band, I think, and getting recognized on the street. Like it's, you get the taste of what it's like to be, you know, a, a proper famous musician, you know, but that's famous. Yeah. Is that, is that not like, is that like so cool? That's like mm -hmm. so cool. Wouldn't change that for the world. And I hope to one day experience that again. Yeah. So, um, what inspired you to start beatboxing and how did you go about learning how to do it yeah uh i i, I was never really inspired to beatbox it was mostly like um i saw like a video on i think it was vine back in the day i was like 12 11 years old oh my and i was like a... yeah and i was like oh this guy's like saying you can just learn your beat if you say boots and cats all the time like, like, <laughs> boots and cats so i was going like boots and cats and then eventually kind of... <laughs> And then what I kind of did from there was just that like every time I had the the like the possibility to beatbox, I would just go around and then later turned out to that I just kept building and building and building on it. Um, and now I kind of just take my singing. So if I take like um, like words, I usually try to beatbox them and come up with new routines. So you have like uh, one one famous one is, is uh, Kevin in uh, New Rules. Uh, the pentatonic mashup they have oh because yeah. he he used he used a method i've i've dubbed the book ticket and he has his <laughs> so he's basically saying book ticket but he's removing the vowels so so and then you can use this yeah so what That's he was crazy, doing yeah. there uh, it's I, i'm able to hear it but 
through the through the recording it's it's kind of sort of like fading out but what what you you can kind of see what he was doing yeah i can i can try it if i if i do it like is it because my mic is is yeah. fitting out or should i get it better yeah, like this try or try it right there if you're like right on top of it you could hear it a little bit better um it could be the like it could be like the noise cancellation yeah maybe but anyway that's that's a really cool little touch yeah. in beatbox <laughs> so <clears throat> Next community question. Uh, well, more of a request. Um, can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about your about damn time cover? Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, heavily inspired by the bass gang, I was like, I want my own bass gang. <laughs> <laughs> so so I reached out to like like to the like I was thinking like who who is like you know who, who's going to be my Avengers team you know, and I of course Journey Day was an obvious choice. I've been uh, speaking to him a lot, and then I recently became acquainted with one of my now very close friends called Monif Sharma, who is the baritone in the in the song. He's the the the, the british one uh, and he uh he he kind of uh like you know grew on me we were playing these like you know small covers and we were talking we were really bonding i was like dude so come in so we have journey day he's tenor two i'm tenor one uh we have monif who is baritone and i was like who's a good bass and then uh i have been through bass gang actually talking to david del monte uh, a bit because he found out that I was representing them and he was like like are you guys doing collabs like I really want to collab with them it's like well I don't know but we'll see and then we started and we became friends as well yeah. and then just I was like okay let's let's do a song just like something cool so we all got in like a like a call like for uh like a night and we were talking we were laughing having fun and then it eventually came to about damn time and then uh we were talking about well who's who's gonna do what who's gonna do what I was like I'll do the arrangement. Fuck it. It was, my, no, it was my idea to bring it. So I'll do the arrangement. So so I did the arangement for it. And then Monev uh, mixed it. Uh, and Tomi actually ended up mastering it, which is pretty cool. Uh, but like most of the work was, was Monev's because Monev, he put like a month's work into this mixing and it has oh, come out incredible, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then Journey did the video and David is saying, bum dum da dao. So was uh great so the the process was yeah basically i wanted my own bass gang <laughs> i got it <laughs> i mean you know what you did yeah <laughs> yeah it was a cool piece i i really enjoyed listening to it when i did it was so much fun uh, <laughs> i gotta go back and listen to it again um i have another request on this list yeah um tell us a little bit about the bass gang shanty and how they came up with that idea oh batch of four yeah so i was um I was sitting with uh, Marwan and Tomi in the call, and I was just like kind of like like going da -da 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 -da, like like just like scatting a bit because I was bored, and then like uh, like the da -da 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 and I was like that sounds pretty cool. I was like okay, how how we do this? Fuck it, let's do a bass gang shanty. So I was like like okay, I opened up like a document and I wrote the lyrics in like like five minutes something like that, like just going out there, and then like I like like showed them and I sang it to them and they were like, dude, you gotta do something with this. Like okay, so at first I recorded it fully acapella like fully shanty and i was like nah, it needs to be like epic more epic epicer <laughs> uh, and um and then i reached out to my good friend adam adam being here and i was like dude if can you like because he's an amazing amazing uh composer adam b uh very young as well uh crazy talented and i was like i have some stuff i want you to do so how about uh we clap on this you will do the instrumental and i will like tell you what i want here there and here there so i kind of like have supervised some of the stuff for the for like like i want key changes here i want specific ending i want to break here and stuff like that and then he just delivered like perfectly and it turned out so crazy cool and then when i listened to it i was like okay how how should i release this should i record a video for it or something it's like you know what I opened up paint and I just drew them like with my mouse. And then for every frame, I was like, okay, what can we do for this like lyric here? And I just like frame by frame, like lyric by lyric, just like animated the video. So it, so it is the way it is. Because I thought, you know, it could be fun. And it turned out like pretty great. <laughs> I actually have not heard this one yet. And I need to go listen to it, guys. I feel uneducated again. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's one of my one of my better originals i'd say it's awesome it sounds awesome <laughs> i gotta give this a listen um i've just got just a couple more for you and then we're yep. pretty close to wrapping this up so 
Oh, uh, what is your most underrated project or song that you've done? Oh, uh, I think it might be my Moon River cover, which is in the original octave. So I'm using like my high chest mix uh, to sing, like very softly jazzy. Uh, but I'm not that big of a channel, so I wouldn't say underrated. But if I had to pick one, probably that one. I've I have not heard this one either. I mean, I did let's go listen to some of his stuff, but I, this is another one of the ones that I did not um, find the time to listen to, which I need to now. <laughs> so this one sounds this one sounds pretty sweet. I don't even know the song necessarily, but this this looks real. This sounds really cool. So I have to look into this one later. <clears throat> Um, what do you listen to or watch to decompress, if anything? Uh, like to like decompress, is like like get rid of stress or like or to relax. Or... To relax to to uh, after you've done like like some training for ah, dance or okay. after singing, etc. Uh, I listen a lot to Al City. He's like my favorite uh, artist. He's the guy behind Fireflies. If you don't know, Adam Young great composer uh so i I listen to that and then uh i'm i'm also like a bit homesick every now and then so i listen to some danish music also here and there and then uh a uh, specific one that really like puts me in sen mode is um a song by Tommy p called napsta dem kuni and it's a Czech, Czech song he did with his friend Patrick, who I'm also very, very good friends with now here in Brno. And it also is like very calming. Uh, highly recommend checking that out. You're not going to understand a word, but it's very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to check this out myself too. And I might have to listen to this one off camera because it sounds pretty nice. Mm. Um, I've got, I think, just two more for you. So this next one is... What vocal technique do you want to learn that you don't know yet, if there is one? I am like desperately trying to get the last vocal technique because I can pretty much do every vocal technique like uh, chest, chest fry, uh, grit, growl, sopramonics, mix, head voice, whistle. I can pretty much do everything, but I cannot do inhale for the life of me. And every time I try, it just like. You know, and I, I'm just drowning. And <laughs> fuck you, <and> ask you. <laughs> But it is, it is hard. And they always tell me, like, no, you had like, like a straw in your throat. I was like, what the fuck does that mean, man? <laughs> so I'm, I'm desperately trying to like to learn, but just, just no. I tried like this, but it always sounds like I'm drowning. Like, uh, you know. So yeah, no. uh, something or something before we move on to this last one. Um, mm -hmm. Something I've learned about ingressive whenever I'm doing it is that if I have the least bit of a dry throat, it's going to sound beyond stupid. Mm. <laughs> so it's going to be like, eh. it's going to it's going to sound very dry, very, very inhuman. It's mm. uh, not that inhale sounds hum humanistic in the first place, but inhale is like, for me, I have to have a, a freshly um coated throat with like a drink of water or something mm. like within the like the last hour and then that's something that i've noticed that helps me with mine and at the end of the day to be honest with ingressive i've been doing this for so long and i didn't even know that people actually use this as a vocal technique until about a year ago and i was like wait i've been doing this my entire life and you mean to tell me people actually use this in music now yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, so frustrating oh my gosh it's so frustrating but it's so cool all at the same time because you can literally like i have a pretty i have a pretty like high low range like mm. on my good days i can keep my c sharp two all day long i mean in my mornings i got the b1 i've almost got a b flat one in chess but just barely my voice classification is technically a low baritone but mm. With ingressive, I can just go into the neg negative octaves. It's kind of it's kind of dumb how how good it is. <laughs> so if you get something like you can go into the first octaves like this, no problem. So Eesh. C sharp D flat one, folks. Nah, I got ingressive, ingressive is awesome. 
but anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. So we've got one more question for you, and this one's uh, this one isn't the least bit serious. But I was okay. asked by Fernie to ask you why Tommy's forehead is so big. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Tommy so well? Because he has a giant brain, <laughs> giant brain. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's the way he has his hair. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> I um, if I can get Tommy on here, I'm gonna have to ask him about about this part because this is this is this is funny. You said it was by Fernie. Yeah, he's the one that said yeah. this question. For Fernie, Fernie and I worked together on uh, Drunken Sailor in four languages. Me, him, uh, Julius, and Adam B. And I remember ever since then, we, we we're friends now, and he's he's a great guy. And then he's also, every time I have something question-related, he always asks, like, the weirdest things. <laughs> like, he, he I think last time on my Q&A, he, he commented, like, Dasper Falmonte, which is like a combination of me and Davide Falmonte, the bass singer from TikTok. Yeah. Like our names. Like that was just the question. Like Fasper Del Monte. That was it. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Fernie is yeah. something else, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Great singer though. Yes, he is. I've heard I just heard a couple of his uh pieces the other day and they're pretty good. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to have to listen to more of his stuff in my time off. So, okay. Well, that about does it for all the questions that I have for you at this point in time. So, um, if you have any, anything else that you would like to say or ask, now is your time to do so before we uh, bring this one to a close, folks. Well, I, I, I probably should have said this when we started, but uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, as I said, I am very involved with the base gang, which is why I have all these insights as I am their manager, basically. I probably should have said that at the start, but a lot of people are probably confused <laughs> as to who the hell I am. <laughs> but uh, no, other than that, um, thank you for having me on. I had a great time. Oh my was, gosh, man. It was, it was nice. good to have you. Um, <laughs> definitely have to have you come back on at some point. We can do like a touch base podcast or something, yeah. maybe. That would be great. cool. All right, man. Well, it was good to have you. We're going to go ahead and cut this reaction or this reaction, this recording here. So everyone say goodbye to Tommy and we'll see him on the next one. I'm sorry, Tommy. I met Casper. <laughs> I struggle on my words. Folks. I'm basically Tommy at this point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, take care of yourselves. This has been Drew on the Vocast on our very first podcast on the channel. Thanks for coming on Casper and we will see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourself.